Hey, what's up everyone? Tim here from Everyday Tactical Vids, and today we're looking at the new Olight Marauder 2. As you can see, it has a 14,000 max lumen output, the throw of 800 meters, and it does uh, note up top that it is a thrower, a flood, and also a power bank as well. Let's check it out. Here's everything that comes in the box. Obviously, you get the flashlight. The battery is built into the light. You're going to get some instructions. You get a plug, and you get your charging cord, and then you get a lanyard as well. All right, so the plug and the charging cord work simply enough. Basically, you're going to plug the one end of the charging cord into here, and then the other end to the back of the flashlight, and then you can just plug this into a wall to charge. Here's a quick look at your lanyard system. It doesn't go in the bottom of the light here. It goes in the side, and there's your lanyard. It's adjustable. And you know you can put it around your arm or you can put it around a piece of gear, however you want to attach it. Here on the end is when you twist this, it opens up the port so that you can charge your uh, charge your light and then close it up. And then it's closed like that, obviously. So um, yeah, just to note there. Then you have some information here as far as your output of the um, output of the battery, and then also the battery capacity, which is a 5,000 milliamp hour battery at 10.8 volts. So a quick look at the light here, you got your two options. That you've got your flood option and your spot option. And I'll show you obviously what that looks like in a minute. You can switch back and forth between the two. This is your power switch and also it's gonna show you, show you your amount of battery power. So this is gonna actually turn the light on and off. And then as you rotate it, it's gonna show you how much, um, or it's gonna adjust the output of the light. And then over on this side, you can see how much battery power you have left. So actually, let me turn this off. You can see I've got almost full power. There's just one more light that would light up there. So I could charge this up if I wanted to, but mostly full charge. We also have the, uh, there's your flood and then your spot in the middle. Pretty aggressive bezel there. It is rubberized around the handle here to get a good positive grip on that to control it. And that's what it looks like in hand. Look at the... Uh, LEDs there again. Nice looking light. All right, let's go through the lumen outputs. We'll start with the flood. So your level one is 200 lumens. That's gonna run for 40 hours. Level two is 400 lumens. That's gonna run for 22 hours. Level three is 800 lumens. That's gonna run for 13 hours. Level four is 1600 lumens, and that's gonna run for seven hours and 30 minutes, and it's gonna slowly fade off and drop down in your lumen output. Level five is 3200 lumens. That's gonna run for 90 minutes, then it's gonna drop down by 50% or down to 50% of that. That's gonna be another 90 minutes, then drop down to 25%, that's 10 minutes. Another down to 13% for 10 minutes, and then to 6% for 70 minutes. So it's gonna drop significantly after 90 minutes and then kind of fade off. Level six is 6,400 lumens. That's gonna run for 13 minutes, and then it's dropped down to 50%. Then that's 120 minutes of that, down to 25%, that's 40 minutes, and then down to 13% for 22 minutes, and then again, fade off. Your highest output is 14,000 lumens. That's gonna run for five minutes. That's gonna drop down after five minutes to 23%, and that's gonna give you 140 minutes of that, and then drop down to 11% for 45 minutes, and then fade off. All right, let's talk about the spotlight. Level one is 50 lumens, that's for 59 hours. Level two is 100 lumens, that's for 31 hours. Level three is 200 lumens, that's for 19 hours. Level four is 300 lumens, that's for 11 hours, 40 minutes. Level five is 500 lumens. That's gonna run for 360 minutes, and then it's gonna drop down to 60% for another 25 minutes, 40% for 15 minutes, 20% for 80 minutes, and then 10% for 110 minutes. Level six is 650 lumens for 115 minutes, and it's gonna drop down to 77% for another 180 minutes, and then down to 46% for 20 minutes, 31% uh, for 20 minutes, and then 15% for 85 minutes. Your highest level, level seven, level seven, is 850 lumens. That is gonna be for 20 minutes, and then down to 76% for 170 minutes, 63% for 85 minutes, 38% for 25 minutes, 25% for 15 minutes, and 13% for 85 minutes. So um, that one's a much more gradual drop off. Um, and similar to level five, six, and seven, those guys are all kind of a, a slow, gradual drop off. And uh, the level one, two, three, and four, Basically, when it gets to, you know, toward the end of the amount of time, it's going to slowly fade off. Looks like level one is going to basically, after 59 hours, just shut itself off completely. A few other details here. It is drop resistant to one meter, IPX8 rated. Um, let's see, your weight is 26.5 ounces or 750 grams. Um, they do know that the charging port itself is waterproof and it is shielded against dust by a port cover. Let me give a big kudos now to Olight for using a USB-C charging cable. 
So this is also, I mean, obviously it's a flashlight, but it can also function as a power bank so you can charge other items. Here's what they say in the instructions. The flashlight's USB-C port is capable of charging other devices up to 30 watts. When charging a separate device from your flashlight, the charging status indicator will flash green. This reverse charging process will stop when the battery level is lower than 5% or the floodlight is on at level 7. So obviously, uh, you can charge things off of that, which is uh, pretty slick. I like that feature. All right, let's talk about function on the light. So when it hasn't been used for 30 seconds, when you press this button down to basically turn it on, it's not going to come on. It's going to show you how high it's set as far as your output and also on this side what your battery output is. So when it's kind of locked after that 30 seconds, you basically want to rotate this uh, 90 degrees and then you can press it and turn it on. So I'll just rotate this, say 90 degrees, press it, and now you can see that the light is on. So once the light is on, you can see here the output that it's giving me. And so I turn it off to turn it on. If I want to crank it up, twist it, and you can see it gets higher and higher. And then if I want to bring it down, twist it, and it gets lower and lower. I was a little bit concerned I might accidentally be bumping this, accidentally be bumping this when I am, uh, you know, trying to adjust it, but I haven't had any issue. So when it's on, I can crank it up or crank it down. Same thing with the spot when it's on, or when it's on flood, crank it up and then crank it down as well. And then obviously press it when it's on once and then it'll go off. So if you want to go to turbo, you're going to double click and you're going to see this go on. That's going to drop down just because it's not fully charged. So here's turbo. It drops down, press it again, it's going off. And then if you want strobe, you triple click. So here comes strobe. So strobe warning, one, two, three. There's your strobe. Click it again, and it's off. So that's the function. Pretty uh, pretty easy to operate. And um, yeah, so I thought I was a little, like I said, a little bit concerned about this rotating knob here, but it has worked totally fine. Again, I was concerned I might bump it while I'm turning it, but that hasn't been an issue whatsoever. So anyhow, that's the uh, details. Let's take it out to the night and use it. Okay, we're on the side yard of my house. The fence is about 25 feet away. We're gonna do 200, 400, 800, 1600, and 3200 with the flood option. Here we go. There's two. There's four. There's 800. 1600. And at this, I can absolutely easily see the entire yard. Just great side yard here. Let's do 32. There's the 32. All right, 32, let's go up to 64. There's your 64. Again, I mean, just a ton of flood here. And let's go up to the 14,000. I mean, it's just blinding on the camera here. So shining it around, I mean, I could obviously see the entire yard, entire side yard, totally fine. I can see up into the trees, great. Let's drop it down here. This is 6,400. Still, obviously, I can see a ton. Great. All right, let's uh, switch over to the beam option, spotlight option. All right, so here's the spotlight option. And this is 50. Let's go up to 100. There's 100. Now we'll go up to 200 here. That's 200. There's 300. There's 500, go to 650 here, there's 650, okay, let's go to 850 here, there's 850 at your highest setting. Got to be honest with you, when I first saw this tiny little square inside the house, I was like, I don't know how that's going to be any help, but that is definitely, I mean, that is a, that is a spotlight for you right there. Let's peek over the fence into the backyard here. I mean, you can see it is definitely just washing out. It's so bright. Let's take a look into another part of my yard here. It is, that is really, really bright. Gotta be honest, I'm pretty surprised it's so bright. Yeah, like if there was an owl up there or something I was looking for at night, I would definitely be able to spot it. Windy night here in New Hampshire. Okay, we're on my side yard now, and we're going to do the flood setting again. So 200, 400, 800, 1600, 3200. There's 200. 
I mean, I could see fine. I could certainly walk out here. It's not great on camera, but let's go up a little bit here. There's 400. Up to 800 here. There's eight. Obviously, you can see pretty much everything now. Let's go to 16. 16. Let's do the 32. 32. Yeah, I mean, I could see probably 50 feet into the woods now behind the shed. Let's go to 64 here. And then we'll go up to the 14,000. Needless to say, I could see everything at 14,000. Drop it back down to 64 just to get a sense, comparing the 14 to the 64. I mean, I could still see great with that, the 64. Not as good as the 14, but this is very impressive. All right, let's go to the uh, spot here now. All right, spotlight now will go 50, 100, 200, 300, 500. Here's 50. Let's go to 100. There's 100 looking at the side of the shed, up into the trees. 200 coming up. There's 200. Here comes 300. There's three. Here comes 500. There's five, there's 650, there's 650. I can't tell you how uh, much more impressed I am than I thought I was gonna be with this spot. Let's go to the 850. There's your 850. I did not think this little cube was gonna do very much, but that's quite impressive. All right, here's the lowest setting on flood, and I'm just like walking out toward the woods here by my house. So with a very low output, you can see just fine just because the bezel of that light is, uh, the light is so big. Just putting out some nice light. All right, we're at 200 now. Let's work our way up. Here's 200. There's 400, let's go to 800. Yeah, with 800, I could see a solid 100 feet off into the woods and 20 feet either side of me. So this is eight, let's go to 16. Yeah, 16 takes it to a whole new level. I mean, that's just, 800 is good, but 16 is like notably improved. That's really good. Let's go to the 14 here. Just a ton of light. All right, we're gonna switch the spot here. Let's go all the way down to the lowest. We'll work up from there. Actually, let's go up to the highest. Let's just start at the highest and see what it looks like to throw some light off into the woods. I mean, that's very, very impressive. Super impressed with this. All right, guys, I'm outside now. It is definitely raining. You can see my car right here, kind of leaning out the side door, the front door. Um, and we're gonna shine this light up the road and see what we can see. All right, so that's the highest setting. Let's crank it back here. Let's go all the way back up to the top. This is with the uh, flood setting right now. There's your 14,000. Oh, we're gonna bring it down, we'll go to the spotlight now. All the way down to the lowest setting, and then we'll go up to the highest here.
like I said before, honestly, I'm just super impressed with this square spotlight. Really, really impressive what it's able to do. All right, let's wrap up here. You've seen it in use. I've talked about the details on the uh, new Marauder from Olight. Let me give you some thoughts and uh, also let you know price. First off, it does come in this black and also comes in a blue as well. And the price right now is 350. But if you're watching this video, um, in a few days there's gonna be a flash sale and it's gonna be about 100 bucks off. So closer to, I think it's under 250 for this guy. So um, when I was first looking at this, I thought to myself, yeah, between two and three is where they're gonna price it. And it was a little bit beyond that, but um, yeah, I mean, that's not surprising. I was thinking in my mind comparing this to like the Nightcore Tiny Monster. And that, when it first came out, was I think 279 or something like that. So, um, one of the big wins of this is that you don't have just say like one minute burn time on 14,000 lumens. It's not going to run for an hour, but it definitely is giving you more burn time than I think in some of the past with O lights and other lights that, you know, they advertise themselves as a super high output, but it's for, you know, 45 seconds. This will give you 14,000 lumens and it's not going to go off in 15 seconds. So, that's a plus. I, I, you've heard me talk about it already, but the spotlight versus the floodlight, I mean, I really like the flood. That spot is very, you know, just boom, like, okay, that's where the light is shining. So if you need a tight spotlight um, that at distance can give you, you know, a little bit more, a little bit more space, um, this is definitely something to check out. I was not, like I said, I was not expecting to be impressed and then I was quite impressed with the, uh, with the spotlight. As far as your price point, I feel like it's competitive for things that are this size, you know, a wide bezel, compact, but, you know, definitely got a lot of lumens output for a searchlight. Ultimately, I think, you know, most people think about this, but definitely with that spot as well is a nice combination of the two. All right, now who is this for? The first thing I thought of when I used this light was this would be good for somebody who lives by a lake, river, or pond. You know, if you've got friends or family who are out canoeing or doing anything, um, you know, where it could be dusk or darker, to have this would be a great light to be able to search. I think that's definitely a win. Could you put this in a car? Absolutely. I think it's, you know, it's like if you wanted to be able to pull over and look for something, you know, out in a field, out in the woods, definitely if you're spotting for, you know, trying to figure out where animals are as far as wildlife. I don't, I don't look at this and say, okay, this is a light I would want for just around the house. It's just too big to like carry it around for, oh, power went out. I'm going to go, you know, check on a couple things. This is really meant to be, I think, outside or in very big spaces, open spaces to do, you know, have a flood option and then that spot option as well. So if you're looking for a home light, it's gonna give you a ton of punch. It just feels like overkill for me. I'd go with one of the Seekers um, that Olight has instead of this. But for that outside searching, quite impressed, quite impressed. Um, Long-term durability, of course, I'll let you guys know about that. But let's hear your thoughts on the Olight Marauder 2. What do you like, what would you change, and what are your overall uh, experiences um, with floodlights, searchlights, maybe you have the tiny, the um, Nightcore tiny monster or something like that. Let's hear your thoughts on that. All right, guys, thanks as always for checking out the videos here on YouTube. Please subscribe to Everyday Tactical Vids if you haven't done so already. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, check us out on Instagram, Tumblr, and Vero as well. More videos coming soon. Take care.